right, so I've got a couple of minutes before my meeting, so I wanted to answer some Q&A that I got on my last video. Let's just get to it here. How much different is software engineering than web development? So they're basically in the same thing. So web development is just like one aspect of software engineering, um, but software engineers might be a web developer, they might be a backend uh, developer, they might be a database administrator, they might be a DevOps engineer. Um, Software engineering is really more of like a holistic term for all these different types of developers. And then like a web developer is just one type of software engineer. By the way, OLED TV for coding, does it hurt? Looks like it's worth a try. No, it's amazing. I, I did this, I really wanted a 4K screen and OLED is like a really cool technology that I wanted to use. And like, I saw a lot of great reviews, so I decided to try it. And I use it a little different for most people. I don't try to like micro optimize my screen. I just, I scale up a little bit um, and it looks fantastic. This has been my favorite screen to code on because of the pixel density and everything. It's really great. Um, I'm actually gonna do a video reviewing the TV and talking more in depth about how I use it. So if you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe to the channel because um, that video will be coming really soon. I don't want you to miss out on it. Do you want some coffee with your cream? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm trying to cut back on caffeine, so that's why there's uh, I only get like one shot of espresso in the morning instead of two. Um, and yeah, I'm not really great at latte art. I'm trying to get better. Okay, so this person says, I really love programming computers, tech, etc., but I guess I'm not that smart and I'm not too good at math. So should I follow my dream to become a software developer or a software engineer or should I stop? Uh, don't stop just because you're not that good at math. And also like intelligence is such a like honestly subjective thing in a lot of different ways. There's so many different types of intelligence to simply say that you're not that smart. I'm sure you're pretty smart. Not being good at math, I don't think has anything to do with not being a good software engineer. Um, there are a lot of people who believe that because they're not good at math that they can't be a good software engineer, but I just don't think that's true. Software engineering really is a lot more sort of logic and um, almost like writing in a way than it is math. I mean, there's a lot of math to it, don't get me wrong, but like day to day, a lot of the work that you do does not necessarily have to include math. Um, like. A logarithmic algebra is something I know nothing about, but it applies to some forms of math that are used in software engineering and I get by just fine. Do you need to have a degree to work this summer? I want to study HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, PHP. Can you give advice? You do not need a degree to get a job in software engineering. I don't have a degree in computer science. I went to a code school and I know many other people who don't have a degree in computer science and some people who never got a degree at all who work in software engineering. It's very welcoming. So much as you can do the work, that's really the most important part. I think some things with like data science and machine learning, there's more of a desire for degrees just because there is a lot of precursor knowledge to have before you can work in those industries. But I know people who transition from being web developers to being data engineers um, without that too. So. You know, your mileage may vary, but a degree definitely, I don't think is a hard requirement, at least in the United States to be a software engineer. Do you develop for website or mobile app? So technically I develop for both because websites can be viewed on mobile devices. I create websites that can be viewed on both desktop, tablet, mobile, um, but I don't create apps. The thing you download from the app store, um, that's a separate engineer. Those are iOS and Android engineers. But yeah, the work that I do is definitely seen on all manner of devices. Can you share about your desk? Is it adjustable? Yes, it is an Uplift V2. I have a link down in the description that you can click on if you wanna go check it out. It's a really cool desk. I got the adjustable one. I, I almost never stand because I find it kind of exhausting and painful on my legs, but I like being able to dial in the height of the desk so that I can get it exactly where I want it so that my ergonomic posture is really perfect. Cool video, does Twitter only use React? So Twitter uses primarily React, I haven't been here long enough to see every part of the code base. I would imagine most web client stuff is in React at this point. There might be some legacy code that's like server-side generated templates or something like that, um, but I haven't come across it yet. What office mesh chair do you have in your office? This is a Herman Miller Mira version one. I'm actually borrowing this from my parents right now. Office chair prices are like skyrocketingly high. Like chairs that I was looking at a year ago are like double the price now. So I'm kind of waiting. I might buy something used just because it's it's insane how much they've gone up, but this is a great chair. I'd even consider getting the V2 of it, but considering I could have gotten an Aeron for the price of what the V2 is now a year ago, I'm kind of hesitant to buy a new chair. I've been playing with the idea of freelancing. Any experience or tips in that area? Yeah, so I freelanced when I first graduated code school. I managed to get both a full-time and freelance job around the same time. So I did both because 
I was still carrying a lot of debt from code school. I had a lot of credit card debt from my expenses and not working for three months. Um, so it really helped me pay down that debt and get back into financial uh, equilibrium. Overall though, like right now between my YouTube channel and my full-time job and some other things I'm working on my personal life, some stuff with family, I don't really have time to take on any freelance work, so I choose not to. Some people who you know have different priorities, they wanna make more money, get to certain goals faster, it might make sense to do freelance work. Or if you're gonna work part-time and you wanna have something to help kind of fill your day and keep you busy, freelance can be great for that too because there isn't an expectation that you're going to show up for 40 hours a week, maybe only 10 or 20. It really just kind of depends on what you wanna do and what your financial goals are. What is the language you use for your work? Primarily TypeScript. Twitter does not use TypeScript everywhere right now, still using Flow in some parts. Most companies though today use TypeScript and lean very heavily towards that, especially newer code bases. TypeScript just was absolutely the winner. So older code bases will still kind of lead, lean towards Flow. When I worked at Bethesda, they very heavily used Flow because TypeScript hadn't really asserted itself as the winner yet. I don't really like Flow very much because the, the support and the sort of updates are just not as, um, widespread and as aggressive as TypeScript with you know the funding of Microsoft behind it. Flow kind of feels like a forgotten project by comparison, but either one is fine. Having static type checks, I think, add a lot to your coding experience. And I would say that they're a little intimidating if you're a newer engineer where you're just kind of trying to understand how code works in general, but ultimately the sooner you adopt them, the better your code will be. Woo, that was fun. Uh, if you have questions, please leave them down below. I love answering these questions. It's really fun to give back. And now I'm gonna go to this meeting. So as you get farther along in your career as a software engineer, you're not going to write as much code as you did um, when you were first starting out because that's really how you deliver the most value when you're like a junior mid-level engineer. As you get closer to senior and you know staff and principal engineers, you really start to focus more on how you can guide other engineers to write code and that's by writing documentation. Um, so right now there's a project coming up that I'm involved in where I'm going to be the web lead on it. And my primary goal is to make sense of the feature and then write documentation so that if another engineer had to come in, they would be able to pick up and write the feature without much feedback from me. It should be that clear what they're doing, why and how, um, without me having to handhold them through the process. I work on the content health team. And by the way, my opinion in no way reflects the opinion of the company, but I'm going to basically summarize really quickly sort of what the goal is of my team, which is that when people come on Twitter, they want to experience it in a way that makes sense to them or that is considered healthy to them. And so some videos, some photographs, imagery, and some text is going to be offensive to some people and not offensive to other people. And, you know, politics aside and everything else, I personally believe that people should be able to choose what they want to see and experience and what they don't want to see and experience. And I don't think that it should be a complete Wild West platform for people who, you know, might be deterred by the fact that they don't want to see, you know, disturbing images in their timeline or sexual content in their timeline. The team that I work on tries to give tools to users so that they can manage what content they see and don't see. And we use, you know, smart learning models that help filter out things that that probably are the kind of content that a user, a specific user, wants to see or not see. It is very personalized. In this project that we're working on, it's basically allowing user to opt into a certain kind of experience or opt out. Sorry, I have to be so vague, but there are a lot of leaks and stuff like that, and I don't wanna leak any feature set before it's ready because I'm really excited about this feature set. I think it's something that could make a huge difference for people on our platform. But in order for me to do the best job that I can, 
I have to do a lot of research up front. So this sprint's gonna be very light coding sprint for me. There might be a couple of times I'm gonna dig into some code just to get a rudimentary understanding of how something works. So for instance, the timeline that you see in Twitter that you scroll through, it's actually like a very Twittery part of our system that's very unique to us. And it's something that I have a little bit of understanding around, but not a lot. So I'm gonna spend some time researching that. And also I'm going to take a look at how this feature we're working on is going to impact people on other teams. So there's gonna be a lot of collaborating, communicating back and forth, making sure that the goals that we have are making sense to other teams that we're working with, as well as making sure that they are still useful to us in light of how other teams might perceive them. If it sounds like a lot of red tape and bureaucratic work, yeah, it kind of is. But when you have a company and an application that's this size, there is a lot of checking and making sure that things make sense because otherwise you might release something that just feels in no way like it's a part of the rest of the application and service. And that creates kind of a disconnected feeling for users. So I'm going to do all this research and then I'm going to do a write up. I'm going to start writing what's called a technical design document. And this document, really, you're going to see more of as you become more senior in your career. Me personally, I'm a software engineer, too, right now, and I want to become a senior engineer at Twitter. Um, and to do that requires writing a lot of documentation and showing that I'm able to lead other engineers through that documentation. So the kind of thing I'm going to be working on this week is going to be a lot of like, where does this component come from? Where does that view come from? Uh, what kind of timeline can we expect for developing this feature? And also what are the prerequisites that we have from other teams? What does the back end need to do before I can get started on the front end? And a lot of other stuff that I'm probably leaving out here, but I'm trying to simplify this as much as I can, which is writing documentation might be the most valuable skill that an engineer actually has when they get farther along in their career. And so today alone, we've actually had three meetings about this project, which might feel like they're kind of a waste, but they're actually really useful because everyone's getting on the same page and we're able to make sure that all the features we want are laid out in front of us before we give any kind of timeline. So today I met a lot with product, I met with design, we talked about what the expectations were about how certain features worked, and now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna spend the next few days putting together an action plan and an estimated timeline for what we think it'll take to get that out the door.